Hey guys, it's Eugene back with part five of the Nostromo build log. Um, if you missed the other parts, you can see the links here all around me. Um, I'm actually not at my home right now, if you can't tell. I'm in a hotel room in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, in fact, if you look over there, you can see uh, Taipei 101, formerly the world's tallest building. I believe that that uh, honor goes to a uh, tower in Dubai now. Still has the world's fastest elevator though. I was there last night, it was very fast. Um, the reason that you're traveling here with me is that I've lost some of the video footage uh, from this portion of the video, so I've had to retape it, and here we are. Um, in this portion, as I mentioned last time, we will cover some of the cable management and the benchmarks as well, and you'll see uh, when I get to the numbers that I'm very happy with them. But first, cable management. All right, so as you can see, a lot of the mess that you witnessed in the system last time has now ended up on my workstation, but the good news is that this is looking pretty clean. So a lot of the cables that were uh, supplying power or sending information to the components up above are being routed here, um, and I tried to follow the path of the uh, water as it goes down here, as well as up here. These are the, um, the power button, and uh, the USB uh, hub that go to the motherboard, and I've followed the path of the tube, so you can see that there's some curvature there, but it still looks nice and neat. Here are the SATA power cables to the hard drives, as well as the SATA power cables to the uh, SSDs, and they're all bundled together. And then the SATA data cables are bundled as well, so you can see which components each of them belongs to, and you can swap them as necessary. Now, here with the uh, cable supplying power to the motherboard components, I've had to basically make the best of a ton of cables uh, and what would have otherwise been a pretty unmanageable situation because you've got three video cards and three separate cables going to the motherboard, the 24 pin and 8 pin EPS as well as a 4 pin. So there's a lot going on there but I think by using these cable combs um, as well as some clever routing, uh, they look pretty neat I must say. The one thing that I do find a bit iffy is this bundle right here, which are the pump power cables. Now, if you wanted to shorten them and make them a lot more appropriate for a run of this length, you could easily do that by cutting and then resoldering, as there are only two cables going to each pump. But I figure I might use them again uh, in a different system, or I might place the power supply somewhere else, so uh, I want to keep the cables this length for now in case I do make that change. Um, you'll notice that there are a lot of cables that aren't just for power. So there's things like temp sensors, the flow meter, uh, USB hub, which I mentioned, and all of that has to be routed as well. So I think given that situation, uh, I've done a pretty okay job, but if you think otherwise, or if you agree with me, leave a comment below. For now, let's get to benchmarks. First up is the Firestrike Synthetic benchmark, including both Firestrike Extreme and Ultra at stock and overclocked speeds. You can see that the numbers are quite respectable even at stock, putting the system within the 99th percentile. But they really see a significant improvement with my 24-7 overclock dialed in, which by the way is 4.5 GHz on the CPU at 50% overclock, as well as adding 170 MHz to the factory overclock GPUs and adding 300 to the memory clock on those. For my first gaming benchmark, we have Battlefield 4. Across the board, this one pretty much reached its max limit of 200 frames per second with all the graphical options cranked up. Next up, Crisis 3. Here again, we're seeing some excellent performance with the overclock reaching 150 FPS at 3440 by 1440. By the way, you'll notice that I typically don't apply anti-aliasing. That's because at this resolution, it really doesn't make a discernible difference to me. GTA 5. Here too, we're seeing a pretty big jump between the 3440 frame rates at stock and at overclock. I think that's due to the fact that GTA 5 taxes the CPU as much as it does the GPU, so overclocking both produces greatly improved results. The Witcher 3 is a game that pushes even this system to its limits at the 3440 by 1440 resolution. Uh, I did try to turn off Hairworks to see what kind of improvement we'd get, and it turns out that it's pretty significant. Still, uh, this is the first game you see where the maximum frame rate isn't reaching 100. 
Far Cry 4 is a really well optimized game that gives us great frame rates and excellent graphics, even without the overclock applied. That said, when we dial in the overclock, you'll see that we're getting over 100 frames per second at 3440 by 1440. Rise of the Tomb Raider is another one with which I'm very happy in terms of the benchmarks. Uh, as with the first Tomb Raider, I think that we are seeing some really good scaling with multiple GPU setups, so it would be great to see what your benchmarks are if you have one or two GPUs running this game. And last up, we have a little slide of the games that I've actually been spending my time playing. Um, you can probably guess that Stardew Valley and Spelunky are locked in at 60 frames a second, but with The Division, I'm still playing with the graphical settings to see what really works. So now that you've seen the benchmarks, you've gotten a little taste of what this thing can do, and you see why I'm so happy with it. Um, it's been a long journey, but one that I think is totally worth it. And uh, you can see that in the numbers that we got from the synthetic benchmarks, as well as the actual gaming tests. And I can tell you from the perspective of someone who's played games on it, that there are very few hiccups, both in terms of stability and frame rate. Uh, in the next video, we are gonna conclude this build log and talk about what I learned, as well as go over a definitive, or as definitive as I can make it, uh, list of all the mods that I've had to do to get this thing looking as pretty as it is. Until then, this has been Eugene Tries.